Today, we're speaking with experts from Land O'Lakes Purina Feed about how America's cattle producers can best cope with today's high input costs. Let's turn back to you, Ron, and talk specifically about these increasing costs in terms of mineral and supplement programs. Can I skimp here and, and, and still get by for a little while? Well, the, the quick answer to that is no. Uh, we've spent a lot of time, I've uh, been in our company over 16 years, and spent a lot of time educating cattlemen across the country on, on the importance of minerals uh, for a lot of different uh, areas in their herd all the way from uh, weaning weights to reproduction. Mm -hmm. And the importance of all of that is that if you skip on any of that, you can be in real trouble, particularly if you're dealing with forages because forages are deficient in mineral. So we have mm -hmm. to have supplemental minerals so the cows will perform. And one of the best examples uh, is with poor quality forage. Uh, you can feed phosphorus and actually improve the digestibility of poor quality forage. So. Little things like that with the macro minerals are very critical for the overall health and well-being uh, of your herd. So skimping is not a good idea. Doug, what's your experience? Well, experience is, is that when you start taking shortcuts with mineral, you're going to start affecting many production parameters, and that's going to affect the bottom dollar uh, and your cost. So. A lot of times we can increase our reproductive efficiency by two, three, four, five percent a lot of times, and that will by far pay for your mineral program. Hmm. So as I fine-tune my feeding programs to keep cost in line, how do I make sure that I'm not short my cows on the groceries they need to perform the way I need them to perform? Drew? That's a good question. And when I take a look at a cow herd, you know, um, most of us, we all know we kind of body condition score our cows, and we use a one to nine body uh, score conditioning system. But the majority of our cows are gonna be a four, a five, or a six. And when we take a look at scoring those cows, we typically will do that maybe four times a year, you know, three months prior to calving, at calving, then at bull turnout time, and then at weaning time. Well, with these high input costs, we probably need to increase how, when we body condition score these cows and probably take a look at doing that maybe on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. Because when we take a look at, you know, moving a cow from a four up to a six, which we really want these cows in a six, that costs a lot of money. So if we can maintain a body condition score, maybe fluctuate a little bit, but keep them around a six, we're gonna lower our overall input costs. And, and that's some things we're doing today with some of our programs as a year-round supplementation program to maintain that throughout the year. And it's, it's providing some returns to our producers that are doing that. Hmm. Well, you know, we've mentioned today that cutting some corners today can cost us tomorrow, but specifically, what do you mean by that, Ron? Well, there's a term that everyone will be hearing more of in the future, and it's called fetal programming. And fetal programming is a term that was basically derived on the human side. And what they looked at is uh, during World War II, uh, during the Holocaust, in, in some cities that uh, were deprived with nutrition because of rationing, uh, particularly in the Holocaust, what they looked at is the children who were born during the Holocaust. And those children were born and they seemed to be healthy, however, they had lifetime health problems and with some other cities too. And the interesting thing is that these children who were not um, genetically, it seemed like they would not have certain problems like uh, cardiovascular disease, they developed it and they passed those traits on to their children. And so we, here we have evidence of an environmental effect which changed the predis predisposition of, of how these people genetically uh, were going to uh, perform the rest of their life, if you will. Wow. Okay. Then we, we apply that to cattle, we apply it to pigs, we apply it to chicken and all different livestock species and there's evidence uh, for us in cattle in Australia here in the United States with some research showing this that how you feed the mama not only affects her performance, her reproduction, but more importantly it affects the developing fetus and then you program that fetus for its lifetime performance and then its offspring. So these are some things that are, we're just finding out now how, how critical nutrition is for the cow herd. And, and Drew mentioned some 
uh, year-round supplementation work. Well, we've been collecting information from our customers that have been on a year-round supplementation program. And at first you think, well, why are we doing this? Okay, You think it'd be a, a, an extremely high cost. But what we found is with some of our free choice programs, these cows have leveled out their consumption. They kind of eat what they need. They're in a more consistent plane of nutrition. Uh, we've been able to increase conception rates. And the interesting thing is the weaning weights have improved dramatically. So something that really can't be explained by normal nutrition. So we think we've got evidence for fetal programming. That's really interesting insight. We're having to rethink all of our former paradigms in this day and age, aren't we? Yeah. Doug, what would you add? Well, I think I would add that Ron mentioned about lifetime performance, and I think that's very important when we start thinking about our cow herd, is trying to increase the lifetime performance of our cows to have them in the herd a lot longer, especially with our higher input costs. I think how we develop our heifers, we already know that for a heifer to pay for itself, uh, it's going to take her about four to five years of age to do that. So how we develop, develop that heifer, get her bred in a calf by two years of age, and keep her going, get her bred back as a first calf heifer, will actually increase the lifetime that that cow or heifer is in, in the herd. That's great perspective, and, and you're exactly right. It's uh, not just getting her bred the first time, but keeping her a productive member of that herd until uh, she pays for herself. 